hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are well and i hope you guys are staying safe in today's video i'm going to be showing guys how to make the blouse that i'm wearing but before i get into the details of the video allow me to say a warm welcome to those of you who are new if you're new here welcome welcome my name is ayatollah the creative director of so unique by me and i am probably known as ajuni by many of you on here if you're interested in learning a lot about diy crafts sewing projects and sewing tutorials that you can do from the comfort of your home this is the channel for you so please do well to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you okay and if you're a returning subscriber to all my ogs welcome back thank you so much for the love and the support i definitely don't take you guys for granted i appreciate you guys and i have to say that you guys are a big part of my community so thank you so much so i'm going to talk about the outfit in a little minute however i wanted to introduce guys introduce you guys to a brand that i've just found to be fair, if I'm being honest, they found me. But they are called Anna Luisa and they are such a gorgeous, gorgeous brand. So they sell jewelry. And if you're wondering why am I all dressed up, where am I going? Well, I wanted to show you guys the jewelry that they, you know, they sell. So I've got this pair called the Ashley Double earrings from them. And in my opinion, this is a really, really gorgeous pair of earrings. I really like it. Um, so yeah, that's a pair from them. And I've also got like this necklace from them as well so this is like a really simple necklace and in my opinion it complements the queen anne neckline of my blouse actually so i really like the fact that it's simple it's elegant and can i just say that all their jewelry is non-tannish which is a big thing for me right i like jewelry that's like really good quality i like jewelry that's lasting however most of the time there's a misconception that if you have like good quality jewelry that is non-tannish, it will be expensive. With, you know, brands like Anua Luisa, you don't have to break a bank. Um, the jewelry is really affordable, if I can say so. Another thing I like about the brand is the fact that they are eco-friendly. And when they say eco-friendly, they actually mean it. Now, some of you know some brands, I'm not gonna mention any names, but when they are delivering like a small bottle of a perfume or something, they use like a huge box, right? Or, ha or household products and they have like a huge box. The of the box is like that the box is that huge right for me that pisses me off because that goes against everything that we're fighting for in terms of like sustainability however with this brand they actually take sustainability really seriously and my jewelry came in this like really small box that says i'm not trash please recycle me reminds you to recycle so i really like that and it came also in this eco-friendly reusable um, pouches so basically earrings come in this black one i've got about two of those and then the necklace comes in like the bigger one so that's what it looks like so to show you the um you know the packaging like close up that's what the um black one for the earring looks like and it has like the brand name anna luisa and i've also got like the one for the necklace so the necklace came in this one and that I actually quite like the color you know it's like a stone color i really really like it okay now when i was deciding what to wear i couldn't quite make up my mind if i wanted to wear like the dropping earrings because they're like a hoop you know a little bit of a hoop with a little bit of a drop i couldn't quite decide or oh, wear my favorite pair and if you're wondering how does she have a favorite pair already well i've had this for months i've tried tried them and tested them i've been wearing them quite often to give you guys a honest feedback and i'm telling you guys this thing is this things are really really good quality good quality actually non-tannish because i sweat a lot you know i've been sweating using perfume the color didn't change right so really good quality non-tannish and the fact that they're eco-friendly i'm like what more could a girl ask for so i already found out that this is my favorite pair from them and this is the sloan one i think it's called sloan and they have this in gold and in silver and like i said it is non-tannish so i wear this pretty much almost every single time i go out these days um and then if i wanted something a bit more i will go for like the one on my on my um ears at the moment but this is a like really really decent pair of earring um i definitely recommend you using this as well or you going for this if you you know if you're interested so go ahead and check out the link that i put in the description box it will take you straight to their website and you can go ahead and shop if you're in the u.s guess what guys they offer free shipping to anywhere in the u.s and if you're outside the u.s don't worry they offer 
fast and affordable shipping they're like you know reliable um shipping partners so please go ahead and shop use the link in the description box all right guys let's go back to sewing so we're gonna learn how to make this lovely blouse that i'm wearing it's a simple blouse but with a queen and neckline that is high neck i really like the fact that it's high neck and it goes up to the top i like the fact that it sits really nicely on my neck i like the fact that it's like looks really structured and then i'm going to show you guys how to make that and then if you're interested to see how i added texture to my bodies please go ahead and tune in next week on the video for next week i'm going to be showing you guys how i added this texture and this ones i use pin tox to make this design so there are different ways we can modify this design if you don't like this one we can go for other designs and i'm going to be showing you like pretty much how to do the basics and then you guys have the liberty to play around with it all right guys without further ado let's enjoy the video for this tutorial, you'll need your blouse block. If you don't have that or if you don't know how to make that, go ahead and watch the video I've linked in the icons above. Just make sure your blouse block is up to about your upper hip line or your hip line. Now on the center front, let's go ahead and start. You want to go ahead and mark your empire length. Your empire length is your under bust length, right? So you're from your shoulder to your under bust. And then you want to go ahead and square out this line. So you want to basically draw a horizontal line that is perpendicular, I believe, from the center front to the side front. Now, after squaring out this line, you want to go ahead and take the measurement of that line, including the dart. After taking the measurement, I went ahead to mark the measurement that I took as 25.2 centimeters and I wrote that down. Now what we're going to do is tighten the empire region and again the empire is under bust. So after taking the measurement on the paper including the darts, we're going to go ahead and divide a quarter and find a quarter of your empire circumference or your round under bust measurement. In my case, I took 25.2 centimeters on the paper and a quarter of my measurement is 21.5. I found the difference and the difference is 3.7. Then you want to divide the difference by 2. So 3.7 divided by 2 is 1.85. And what I decided to do is find half of 1.85 to the left and half of 1.85 to the right. And all these marks are marking it starting from the midpoint or the midline of your initial dart, right? Once you've marked this point, go ahead and connect it back to the actual dart line on the um, waist side. And then using a French curve, you want to go ahead and just draw a curve to connect this point as well. So you need a French curve. You start drawing from the bus point or the point where the bus meets. Yeah. And then you draw with a curve like this. It's really hard to explain, but if you watch it, then you understand it. Then you place this curve inversely and then connect it back to you know your new point and what you'll notice is that essentially it tightens it because it actually comes out a little bit from where you had your initial dart and makes it a bit more fitted now moving on we're going to work on the neckline and for this style i'm using a queen and neckline however i want mine to be high neck so starting from the neck width you want to mark angle 90 degree towards the center front and then when that is done you want to mark a 45 degree angle now the 45 degree angle is where the high neck will be so go ahead and use a ruler or a protractor and then mark angle 45 again this is going to be towards the center front on your angle 45 degree line go ahead and mark three centimeters this is how high i want mine to be if you want yours higher go ahead and do it and then after doing that we're going to go ahead and shape on this later but real quick let's go ahead and work on the actual neckline for the queen Anne. so i went ahead to close my dart and i'm closing my dart towards the shoulder don't forget and i decided where i wanted the neckline to be I squared out from the center front point. You have to square out. So don't just draw a straight line. It has to be squared out perpendicular to the center front. And then around there, you want to tighten that region so that it sits nicely. I recommend using one to one and a half centimeters on each side and then connecting that back to your bust point, which is what I'm doing now. After doing that, you might want to connect it also to the shoulder so that you tighten the shoulder region. So everywhere that I've marked with a marker is actually where I'm cutting off. And then I went ahead to connect it back to the shoulder. Like I said, it will be good to tighten your shoulder region as well. Now, one thing is it's going to be hard to close it right now because the dart is not lying flat, but I wanted to kind of see if my neckline will come together and I'm happy with it. So now that I have that, it's easier to work when I cut off the bottom part of the dress or the bustier part of the blouse rather. So now that I've cut that off, I can then reshape and reclose my shoulder dart. After closing the shoulder dart, I'm going to hold it in place with some paper tape. And this is what it looks like, guys. 
next thing to do is to determine how you want the neckline now if you were not doing the high neck all you have to do is from the neck with you just have to draw a slant line towards the edge where the paper tape is like i did right that's if you were not doing the high neck however i am so what i'm going to do is use a curve and then i'm going to connect it from the high neck points to that exact same point where the tape, paper tape is so there you have this go ahead and cut it off and then make sure you label your pieces appropriately so that you have the right um label on it so that is the shoulder area that's the arm hole and that is the neckline right so at this point we should have like three pieces for the front we have the center front piece we have the side front piece and of course we have the queen and neckline area piece moving on to the back we're going to do something similar for the back you want to go ahead first by connecting your shoulder darts to your waist dart on the back side all you have to do is just elongate to the dark dart legs for the shoulder dart and that way you've connected it next we will need to do angle 90 or 90 degrees angle around the neck width so again in similar fashion towards the center back go ahead and mark angle 90 degrees which is just a straight line you just need to make sure that it's perfectly straight and then you want to find the 45 degree angle for your 90 degree angle that you marked earlier and again you can use a protractor or ruler for this in similar fashion on your slant line we're going to mark three centimeters if that's what you use for the front so if yours was higher you can go ahead and use something higher however i used three centimeters because i didn't want it ridiculously high so i mark my three centimeters here and then i'm going to square this out towards the center front when i say square it's pretty much just a straight line now where I've squared it out, I need to make sure that it has a little bit of curve because your neck and your body is not straight. So I'm going to use my French cuff to do a curve. And after that, guys, we literally are done with the back piece. Go ahead and label and then cut it out. Make sure you follow all the curves where necessary. And this is what it looks like. For the back piece, you should have two pieces. You should have the center back piece and that one should be really long as well as the side back piece. At this point guys you have all your pattern pieces two for the back and three pieces for the front it's time for us to get cut in we're gonna start with the front piece if you're not working with textured fabric you can skip this part but what i'm doing is i'm doubling my pattern just because i'm working with textured fabric and it's harder to cut when it's unfold so i'm going ahead to pin my paper onto like paper another piece of paper that is folded and then i double the pattern this is what it looks like. Don't forget to mark the top and the bottom so you don't make a mistake. And then I'm pinning this in place onto my pin tox fabric. Now, like I said, because I have had I have added pin tox to this fabric, it's actually a bit difficult to work with. It doesn't lie so flat. However, you just want to take your time and be patient while pinning it. Mark out your sewing allowances of half an inch all around, including the hem for this style. Um, and then you want to go ahead and cut it off you can leave a sewing allowance of one inch if you left some space at the bottom however i think i went with half an inch because of the style i was using to hem it then you want to go ahead and cut out the main pieces so pin your center front in place and then cut it out i'm using my serrated scissors for this fabric because it actually frays a lot and the serrated um, scissors helps to prevent or kind of slow down the frame process right and then you want to cut out the um, neck piece as well for the neck piece i actually cut out four pieces as the lining and the main fabric as well after cutting out all the front pieces it's time to cut out the back pieces so pin them in place mark out the sewing allowances don't forget to leave your zipper allowance of one inch at the center back and your side seam allowance and then cut it off and at this point you're literally all done so now it's time for us to get stitching start with the center front go ahead and unpin it because i have pin tucks i'm going to sew the edges so that the pin tucks lie in the direction that i need them to lie after sewing the edges this is what they look like i'm going to grab my center front piece and i'm going to go ahead and pin them together so you want to place the center front piece on either side and make sure the right sides are facing each other and start to pin i like to pin from the bottom and from the top and then work my way through the middle but after pinning, I go ahead and mark my sewing allowance of half an inch and then I sew the side to the um, center front in place. Repeat this for the other side as well. One thing I like to do is to overlock after sewing and I'm using my Janome Air Thread 2000D for that. Now at this point, this is what the pieces look like. In my opinion, they look really neat because I went ahead to overlock them. So we're going to start with our Queen Anne neckline piece. You want to go ahead and unpin them. And like I said, you should have four pieces of this. I place them on each other so that they're in the right direction. And you want to go ahead and pin along the neckline. 
After pinning along the neckline, you want to go ahead and sew it in place on half an inch sewing allowance. I'm using my Janome HD9 Professional Heavy Duty Sewing Machine for this part. And then I went ahead to top stitch this so that it stays in place and it looks really nice and neat. After sewing the neckline bit, this is what they look like and I created a notch along the shoulder so I can tell the difference. When we're done, this is what the top should look like in front. Moving on to the back piece, you want to go ahead and unpin the back pieces and then you want to go ahead and sew it together in place. So this is the center back, add the side back to the side so that you know which one goes in the right direction. And then starting from the shoulder, you want to go ahead and pin them in place. You can also start from the bottom just to make sure you have the right pinning process. And after pinning, go ahead and sew on half an inch after sewing as usual we went ahead to overlock it and this is what it looks like now that the pieces are ready we're going to go ahead and cut out the interface in um, the facing rather so for the facing i went ahead to get the pattern pieces and i you know used some paper tape to hold them together and then i cut it out with um some paper scissors and the reason why I need facing is I want a neat finishing, however, I'm not lining this outfit. So I've cut out the back facing and we're going to do a similar thing, cut out the fabric as well. So I go ahead and pin it onto the fabric, mark out my sewing allowances, and then I went ahead to cut it out. Your facing only needs to be a little bit. So go ahead and, you know, cut it out. Next, we want to do the same thing for the front or for the bustier part. So pin it together and use some paper tape and then cut it off as I'm doing and then cut out your fabric. Remember that for this one, it has to be unfold. So go ahead and cut it off after, you know, pinning it and marking out your allowances and then you should have your facing pieces. So right now, this is what the facing looks like. We have the front facing and the back facing. So let's start with the back. Go ahead and lay your back fabric onto the table and then get your back facing. Place the facing on the fabric so that the right sides are facing each other and then you want to pin it along the neckline and sew it in place. After sewing and top stitching the neckline, it's time for us to join the front piece to it. So go ahead and place it aligned, right? You want to find the shoulder part and then place it so that it's aligned. Now starting from the top stitch parts, pin it in place, pin the edge in place and then work your way to pin the shoulder in place. After joining it, this is what it looks like. I'm going to show you much slower. So place the um, piece on top so that the neckline aligns. That's how you know first. And then starting from where there's a top stitch, pin both of them in place. And then work your ways to the edge and then pin that in place and then pin in between. It might be easier to first do the main fabric, which is what I'm pinning now. And then afterwards, pin the um, facing fabric in place as well. Once you're done pinning, when you're sewing, you need to be very careful and slow down when you get to that, you know, funny curve. After doing that, give it a good iron. And guys, this is what it looks like. I'm happy with the result. So now we need to join this to the other side. Go ahead and place it on the table so that the right sides are facing each other. And we're going to be sandwiching this queen and neckline bit into the facing and the bustier so it's going to be in between the facing for the top and the bustier part right so go ahead and place that in place where you need it to be and then after placing it where you need it to be hold it in place with pins make sure the right side is facing the right side of the bustier and then we're going to place the facing on it when you're placing the facing on it, you want to make sure that the right side of the facing is facing the right side of the outfit and then you want to pin it in place and after pinning it, if you've done a good job, it should align. Sew it in place and after sewing, make sure you go ahead and overlock it and top stitch it as well. After top stitching and overlocking, this is what it looks like and at this point, we are nearly finished with our blouse. Starting from the ammo, go ahead and pin the side seams in place and you want to start pinning from the top all the way to the end. Now, one thing I do have to say is for this, I have decided to do like curved hems. However, you can hem it however you want. So pin it all the way, mark out the sewing allowance and then go ahead and sew. Repeat this for the other side as well. After sewing the side seam, this is what it looks like. I went ahead to also make sure to overlock it. And then now I'm just doing my curved hem like I wanted to, which is why I only needed about half an inch. For curved hems, it doesn't need to be too much. Now, after doing the hem, this is what it looks like. Side seam is all done, hem is all done. The next thing to do is to do the zipper. For the zipper, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the middle. So not at the very top and not at the very bottom. Now go ahead and place the back piece on each, back piece on each other. So the right sides are facing each other 
and then you want to pin from the top all the way to like four five inches and then from the bottom to about four inches as well after pinning it in place you want to go ahead and sew that on one inch sewing allowance so about four five inches from the top four five inches from the bottom and then you want to sew all of that in place so you're marking one inch all the way to down and bottom now after doing that I go ahead and install my zipper and I use invisible zipper. This is what the installation looks like. If you want a tutorial on that, I can give you one. However, I do have a couple of tutorials I can link. It's time for us to um, install the sleeves. And for the sleeves, I just cut out a basic sleeve, nothing fancy. I have a video showing you how I cut sleeves. So I'm not going to go into too much details in this tutorial so that we don't keep it too long. If you do want to see how I cut my sleeves, go ahead and watch the video. I've got actually a pattern tutorial and i've got a freehand tutorial so please check it out cut out the sleeves based on what you desire i wanted like you know really huge sleeves in terms of like the biceps it wasn't fitted and then i wanted gathers around the top hem your sleeves and then go ahead and sew your sleeves in place all right guys so at this point you sew your sleeves in place and this is what it looks like the blouse is now finished thank you so much for watching this video to the very end i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was worth your while if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to share don't forget to leave your comments suggestions and feedback in the comment section below i will be reading each and every single comment and i will be responding you guys already know that's how we do it in this community if you're interested in shopping you know good quality affordable non-tannish jewelry please check out the link i have put in the description box right it's going to take you straight to anna Luisa's website where you can actually shop really quick great quality jewelry from like this one or like the necklace i'm wearing and you guys would absolutely appreciate it i promise you it's really good quality i've tried and tested it and if you're interested in seeing how i add texture to my fabric make sure you tune in next week at 5 p.m gmt which is uk time and make sure you check out the video on how to add texture to your fabric i'm going to show you how to play around with pin tucks and just add texture to that fabric so then stay blessed and you guys stay safe